Because Gambia, every young person, especially male person, you know, you, 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 when you are born, you, you grow with football. Uh, either at one point or to the other. They have all been really uh, either uh, observers or actors in, in, in football at different levels based on our age and our position. Uh, we know it's the Gambia Football Federation was founded in 1952. And since then, so many, you know, uh, it passed through so many great uh, hands. So, GFF or GFA went through a lot of ups and downs here and there, you know. Um, the one that I can talk about most is would be when uh, Gabi Sose came, you know, he was a little bit of transformation, especially the secretarial level. Omar C, I would say, had done a great job in terms of making sure that the, the administration, he himself was a football administrator, you know, and he was a CAF executive member, he was a member of a FIFA committee, uh, you know, nearly became the president of CAF, in fact. So having that background, you know, I think, you know, he was able, and it was during his time also we hosted the U17 and won it in the Gambia here. Um, after Omar C, CD Kinte came. Uh, when CD Kinte came, he came in, I think, around December. Uh, but I know that during his time as well, they won U17, they won U20, that is AFCON, and they went to World Cup, you know, and uh, after CD Kinte, then we got into that where the ups and downs got into normalization. And I think it was during that normalization, the name, change of name you mentioned uh, happened during that time. Uh, from the GFA to the GFF, the structures also changed. For the first time in a Wafu tournament, you know, Wafu used to be like America Cabra. Gambia won in Liberia, and we brought the cup from Liberia. Even though we won the CAF at, at the AFCON level, but this is the Wafu level, that is the first time. Uh, that was in 2018. Uh, 2019, Gambia again, uh, this U20, that was our U20, they went bronze medal, you know, in Chile. So in 2020, they did history again. They beat Senegal uh, in uh, Senegal and uh, won the trophy for the first time in our history for Gambia to win in Senegal and brought the trophy. The core mandate of the Gambia Football Federation is to develop and promote football. Of course, they are involved in also national team, but national team naturally are also, well, primary responsibility of government, but it's government more of government responsibility because national team everywhere represents the nation, whereas the GFF is, is the, to ensure that it serves the member association, member clubs. I manage the finances of the Football Federation. So, more or less, I'm um, the corporate head of the Football Federation, whereas the president is the policy, the governance, governance part of the Football Federation. The challenges were numerous. Uh, they, were, they, were, they, were, they were numerous because, first of all, we need uh, the, the administration, that is secretarial, to be able to implement our policies and programs. And the staff number was very minimal. Uh, Officers were here without the requisite tools to work with, computers, the Wi-Fi was a non-starter. Uh, ambitious and brilliant, our, our policies and programs are, if we didn't have the tools or the wherewithal to, to implement them, it would be zero. And we cannot do it, we only make policies and programs, but this office, yeah, from the general secretary to the last person, the third one, they are the one who uh, should be armed, should be prepared to implement those. So that has been the biggest challenge. We are really behind as far as football infrastructure is concerned. And you cannot do football without a standard infra infrastructure. Then you are completely disadvantaged. Secondly, 
if you look at the elements that make our football, football is drawn by certain special groups, football clubs. All our clubs are amateur, they are fragmented, they are not organized, they are weak financially, and more importantly, the attitude of the people that runs football uh, is seen as a pastime, but not a real life thing, a business uh, per se, because football changes lives. So our clubs are weak, and the other players, like the coaches, if you look at the number of footballers in the country, regardless of our amateur stages, there was a complete mismatch between the number of trained personnel, coaches, administrators, referees, and medics that prepare. Because it takes a lot of effort to take 11 men to come onto the pitch and they become winners. This one of the biggest problems of the, the GFF is funding. Because we are an amateur league. We do not have any sponsorship. And we have products that are good, but uh, by our experience, because of two things, the overall country economic situation, the macroeconomic situation, uh, has been very difficult. We all know for the last 22 years what we've come from. And now, actually, COVID has actually come in. Uh, advertisement in this country is not very big. ignore_time_segment_in_scoring ngiye dama ci genn taxi moy bi manam limo ko jaayé lay dank yop ñoo jox leen leen jaaré jël leen dé dé do ko défé nonu way dafa am percentage buñ ci jël dafa dess nak ci xaaliss bi ni mu toll ñu genné ci mën nga fay sax 5% wala 15% ma na fay juroom waaw wala fuk ko juroom waaw kay bu féké yow kenn la waye bu féké compagnie moko jaay waaw mo xam kër gi empty la la waaw wala dafa am tax ci biir waaw bu féké compagnie ko jaay mën na fay 10% wala sax 25% ma fay ji fuk wala fuk ak juroom bu fekke compagnie non la lolu moy capital gain tax tanak du land rek ak yenen yi melni mom yep ta xam nga lolu fay ko li tax mu am sol ah da fay dimbali rew bi gis nga agriculture bi waaw njangum xale yi waaw tali bi hmm hospital bi yoy yep dafa bok ci lo xamne government bi daf ko wara def nga gis ci sa bop yow legui bi manam fum ne ni may waxe yow fi la defé beurit dootuma jaar kër ga de ni lay jaar dem jaar yi yeen ñi dima setan ak man mi di wax ak yeen daw leen gaaw ngeen fay sen capital gain tax ci makani jaar ye bu leen gëna jégué ndax lolu moy doole rew mi over the years the GFF has increased the trained personnel in football, like I said before, the coaches, administration, referees, and medics, more than, in some cases, 2,000%. We have had developed our own D license. We, have, we, we are working with CAF and FIFA on the C license, and then we uh, on the B, B license for coaches, and there are even plans to do the A license, not only in the greater Banjulia, but across the, across the country. The star players, uh all homegrown. Uh, this is why, as I said, we improved the league. If you can see the league, uh, our standard has really risen up. Uh, and also, as I said, the, the base has been broadened uh, in terms of uh, decentralization. Uh, you go to North Bank today, they have a full fake league, male and female. You go to uh, URR, you go to CRR, you know, they, they have their leagues that really every day makes sure that this period, they have a calendar, 
we played in league and completed. And also trying to improve the, the, the football grounds because it's very important. If you look at uh, LRR now, with the, with the artificial pitch there, now LRR, they have two, two teams in the, in the second division, a male and also have a female team in the, in the, in the, in the, in the female league. So you can see it's increasing, increasing the, the player because of the, the, the tough, the facilities that's there. Playing on that, on that pitch day in and out, different from playing on a sandy pitch or, or just a, a bare sand, it's quite different, you cannot, you cannot imagine. Uh, look at the, the, uh, the tough that it was put in Brikama. Brikama has been a football community. But if you look at the revolution that they brought football in Brikama, look at the Brikama United, the Bombardas and others, look at the Fortune, uh, based in Farad, but Brikama is their home ground, they, they played the Navitan there until they rose. Now they are leading the, the league table because of what is available on the ground. And uh, this really is, is very important. So, uh, as I said, we are also into, into development aspect. We have uh, schools and youth football. As I mentioned about the school football, thanks to COVID 2020, you couldn't do it. But it used to be one of the, the highlights of our, of our, our activities, annual activities. And also, you know, after that, we have what we call the, uh, the jamborees that we organize for the youth, young, the young people, to, to encourage them and to play football and also to allow this, the, the scouts or the coaches also to scout the potential talents, bring them together and develop. And then uh, we, we, we also have this uh, holiday come. We have the uh, School of Excellence at the Technical Training Center. That also, as I said, except for last year, we couldn't do it because of COVID. Uh, we, we bring, at the end of this tournament, bring the good talents, uh, 40 boys, 40 girls, put them together for a week or so, expose them to modern techniques and compete among themselves. And from there, the clubs also pick them. So grassroots football is very, very key. Yeah, it's one of the countries that we have endless talents of football, endless talent. Uh, a, a white man told me, he's a coach, a Spaniard guy, he told me, the President, Gambia is among the few countries that has somebody, a boy or girl is born with a talent or skill to play football. All he, he or she needs is to be developed and molded. Uh, we have what we call the Technical and Development Committee. This is composed of people who have the knowledge uh, in, in football management, uh, technical side of it. Uh, who also will preside over uh, those potential candidates, review their credentials, and also um, call them for interviews uh, until they arrive at uh, a conclusion and make their recommendation uh, based on option one, two, three, and quite often that normally is based on uh, their fin the financial package that each of them will be asking. Asan, for us, is one of the key players we look up to as far as uh, approaching matches are concerned. Um, recently, the coach have uh, been largely uh, criticised, you know, for leaving a few other strikers, you know, who are doing very good in their clubs in Europe. But I think um, we always need to uh, understand that uh, um, football is dictated by the tactical approach of uh, the, the coach. I think the coach really deserves to be there because what the federation is trying to do is to get to Afcon but also the World Cup is another target for us. So we couldn't just come and say, okay, we've qualified for AFCON 2021 and that's it. So coach go, another coach comes. Because one thing I've learned as far as being an, being an administrator is concerned is the issue of continuity. You know, it's a key, uh, a, a, a key aspect in terms of trying to achieve football needs stability. So if you have a coach who employs a tactic that you know, is giving you results, why change? Uh, as the head, of, uh, the head coach also, uh, he doesn't have the absolute authority to decide, determine who should be part of his team. But he can, he can recommend, he can, he, can, he can advise. And quite often we go by his you know, because when you want somebody to deliver, you must give the pass in the way with that. Uh, to, to, to be able to work with the tools that he thinks will make him succeed. Both the federation and the government have, um, you know, all been so, 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 so cohesive in this direction. They've always, you know, answered to to, to our calls. Um, yeah. So if you have a charter plane, for example, gather all the players from Brussels down to Banjul. Um, you know, so play the game. The aeroplane is still waiting. We just put, you know, the departure dates there, and then, you know, eventually we fly at our own, you know, discretion. So yeah, that is what makes it look easy, but in advance as a manager you have to work months before, you know, for me it's like, you know, it's gonna happen just the next week, you know, and in reality it's just three, four, five months. 
And one thing we are able to achieve is also, with as much as possible, uh, that we don't on, uh, owe them the allowance or the bonds that they are due uh, to, uh, unnecessarily uh, for a long period of time. It could only be delayed due to logistical or other issues, but we did everything possible that their motivation really, we don't, we don't play with that. And we also improve on the condition, the facilities, the hotels that we put them, both locally and internationally. You'll be surprised. We put our players, government players, in a Pullman hotel in Kinshasa. That's not a small thing. <laughs> and if you go to uh, Gabon, you go to anywhere. And in the Gambia here, they got one of the best hotels, that's the uh, Ocean Bay Hotel. Before they were going to other hotels, but I said things have changed. Because these are professional. These boys, uh, almost 99% of them are plain professional. And they are with their colleagues who also belong to other national teams. And they sing notes. So you can, you can understand sometimes how they also would feel if they are seen by colleagues to be. We all have, I, I went through that, I was ambassador. Uh, when during discussions, when my colleagues were discussing about our pay, I will uh, triple or quadruple what I earn to be able to tell them this is what I earn, why it's, that's not the reality. You know, but because that's, the, um, that's naturally uh, the, that's the nature of our uh, capacity in terms of uh, as a country. So we are able to uh, manage with the players and then uh, one thing after the other, we improve on, on, on the conditions give them the best condition that we could afford and we, they always appreciate uh, within our means to make sure that they, their motivation really we don't, we don't joke with that and we can really be uh, transcendent to until recently uh, with the close collaboration with the government we are able to convince the government uh, because of COVID traveling has not been easy especially air travel um, the schedules are not reliable they could change at any time and a country that depends on uh, say 99 percent plus uh, players who come from outside, if you want to depend on the current uh, uh, regular or commercial schedules, you may have a last minute disappointment in terms of the movement of players. So we sold this added to the government and really the, the Honorable Minister Bakari Baji really uh, reported immediately and shared it with uh, his colleagues in cabinet and the president himself and they approved it and hence the, the, the provision of the charter flight from, for our Mike in Gabon at Banjul. Uh, the flight with them to, to, to Gabon and the Banjul and back to process. And the last match also for the match in Banjul, uh, King Sata and then back. So these are things that really, these are uh, even countries that are much more endowed than us. Uh, they don't do, but it has paid dividends. It has really brought a lot of stability and comfort and confidence in the, in the, in the, in the, in the dress room. Uh, we really you know, uh, challenge the, 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 the players also to, to do their best and hence that we had uh, recently. So basically these are the things that we had we are confronted with. And one of the our our, our famous adage was uh, uh, the structuring and rebranding. We became at one time was you know, we've been being uh, mocked by it, the opponents. They are always rebranding and restructuring. We haven't seen anything, no results. And uh, people became impatient because football like any other uh, any other sports uh, game, you know, the, the fans don't have time, they don't have, they don't have patience, they just want results. So whatever you are doing in the background, they don't care. The, the, the coach will select his 11 and then the fans will, will not agree with him. While he's the one who knows them, he's training with them, but he knows who can play where. But if you say no, we are all fans at one point. And the referee will, will, will be ruled because of the rules that he himself is the one is the custodian. We the fans will say no, this is not, this is not right thing. So these are the, the football. So there are a lot of impatience in terms of from this fan side. And some of the detractors for the, for the, for the political opponents were also using that as a mockery, you know, the branding, the structure, the brand, the structure. But uh, we had a vision, we had an objective, we know where we want to go. And we set uh, a roadmap for ourselves. Uh, as I said, the manifesto was later metamorphosized into, 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 uh, into a strategy development plan. Uh, we set targets to, for ourselves. And we have we 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 resilience and the sense of focus and direction. We try, we, we, we close our eyes and we don't listen to the unnecessary distractions or critics and then we concentrate on that. We didn't take any fast track measure. We knew it will come, it may be late in the first four years, will not be easy. Uh, but at the end of the four years, first four, four years, I think uh, the, the fans, the stakeholders uh, begin to realize where we are going and I think they started seeing the, the, the light at the end of the tunnel and they didn't have any hesitation to renew our mandate, uh, it was a landslide. And when we started, we've seen what's happening in the development of uh, the game, both at the international level 
uh, uh, those are the national teams of all, of all categories, not only the senior. Uh, for the first time in the Gambia, also we are registered, we are classified, uh, we are ranked rather in, in the FIFA ranking for women's football. That has never happened. Uh, we are one of the top clubs, uh, team, sorry, national teams in, in, for women's in, in, on the continent. And we are very admirable position when it comes to youth football also. Uh, so these are, these, are, these are things that really we, we, we work towards uh, so over time. We organize so many you know, friendly and test matches to prepare our teams. Uh, the story of the, the, on the, the under 20 and others also are uh, 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 During the year, there is a calendar that FIFA, which is the world governing body, it has the ultimate authority in terms of uh, managing global, global football. Uh, as we adhere to, to RIP, we, we are a member of it, we are also, we must you know, uh, comply with the, the, the constitution the status. So the, the calendar will determine the number of days in a particular month, like in, in, in March, normally March, June, we have August, September, and October, November, depending on what they would say. Maybe you say, like, no, like say March, uh, the 10-day ten ten period from the 1st to the 10th, this is a FIFA window. So this is the time that clubs, uh, are mandated or uh, they are obliged to list the player to, to their national team. So that's, this is the only time you have, have to see how you manage, how you bring them together to train before the competition. Because all this happens in the same period. If you don't have any competition with that period, in that period you can call them, bring them together. That's why you have the friendly matches and test matches so that you can, you can develop their cohesion. Uh, but if uh, the Federation or a member association, like any other country, would, the, the Federation cannot be able to keep their they are a team because it's, it's dynamic, it's developmental, and they have stages that they pass. And as, 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 a, as a body, we could not be able to do that. Because what they are, what they, what, 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 what's available to them, some of them as professionals in England or in, in Germany or in France, uh, we may not be able to have. And the more they go out and play, the more, the more they, they are developed, the more they are exposed to other things. And for the first time in the history of the Gambia, during our administration, women's football was able to make it to the FIFA World Rankings for the first time ever. The women's football is even higher than male football in the Gambia, which we've been doing since 70, 70 years, years ago. Uh, our plan is to have a sustainable development. So we want to go to the next AFCON, and to the next AFCON, and to the next AFCON, going to perpetuity. We want to go to the, to the World Cup. We want to win if it's Afghan, it's possible. Any nation uh, can, can do it. Conrad, I don't. Eh, sorry, Conrad. Two more. In a morning. Nekor Dawa. Nekor Dawa. Nekor Dawa. Nekor Dawa. Nekor Dawa. Il <laughs> <laughs> Il y a un capital de taxes qui est en train de se faire. Ni y a une compagnie qui est en train de se faire. Il y a une compagnie qui est en train de se faire. Il y a une compagnie qui est en train de se faire. Il y a une compagnie qui est en train de se faire. Il y a une compagnie qui est en train de se faire. Il y a une compagnie qui est en train de se faire. Il y a une compagnie qui est en train de se faire. Il y a une compagnie qui est en train de se faire. Il y a une compagnie qui est en train de se faire. Il y a une compagnie qui est en train de se faire. Il y a une compagnie qui est en Femana nini jata kenda abunda nini kala moli kuka na ulbeka bonye na molo kwa aku jamaa jamaa bama kwa bonye na molo kwa amanda wala bageri nini stilo la mimi ni dini yata ana boka kataji yele mbaju yele kumi mbaju yele ni mara mbamu mfu mungu kambi ya mbaju yele kwa hundu ya jolo mungu diare la ofisi ya bado wada ni tafu tana je ibadona ta capital a game tax le jo damu na ta wale jo ibadona Abang aku ni alun beri. Abang kamera. Ya lo. 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 Ya lo.
ni yawa fi mukuma taje wala tarjiare la capital game taxi to yetaete la namojo i would also like to appeal to the general public for the level, level of cooperation and support since inception the government and the federation that uh, we must try to improve every time because there is always room for improvement there is no complete team in the world if we see this shirt that we wear as a team and we hear the anthem blowing you know we are ready to die for our country irrespective of where the destination we would always fight to uphold the flag of this nation going high every time Involving in football and sports is a physical exercise. They get even more healthier. They're again, saving for the state. And when they get to the professional level, they send money here. It's foreign exchange earning for the state. So if you look at uh, uh, the, the, the benefit of sports, especially football, that is a mass sport here, is, is, is great. And I'm not even talking about the help that they, they give to their families. We all know how Gambia is like. We, it's an interdependent uh, uh, culture or society. So it can change people's life quickly. The corporate body should also come and support and help. That way their business will be exposed, but also they will be contributing to national development. Gambia's qualification, what Tom Senfed and his boys did to registered by taking Gambia to Afghan is dedicated to all of them and, 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 and uh, those who have deceased and passed may Allah have mercy on their souls and those who are around we are praying that you know, may Allah allow leave them to continue with us until uh, we, we make our maiden appearance in Cameroon in January 2022 so that at least the dream can be more a reality. Thank you very much. We need to take the COVID-19 vaccine because vaccines have been known to be very effective in um, fighting infectious diseases um, because we have had diseases before like smallpox, like yellow fever, cholera, you name them. These were diseases that used to kill you know, hundreds of thousands of people and they were all stopped um, through the interventions of uh, vaccines and also we remember in Gambia there is a place called Half Dai, uh, which half of that town died in the early 50s and then it was due to an outbreak of a disease which was later known to be either cholera um, and then after. So these are all evident to say that vaccines are very successful in preventing diseases. So by taking the COVID-19 vaccine, we are sure that people can actually be protected and safe um, from um, COVID-19 um, virus and other uh, forms of disease. So it is very important for people to take this vaccine because it can help in building their immunity and that means they cannot be either you know, having severe signs or symptoms of COVID-19 even they were um, to have the virus. I'm 22 years old. 
and I am the founder and CEO of Project Mr. Gambia. A little bit about my background. From a child age, I went to Glory Baptist and then I finished to Glory Baptist International School. But ever since I was a kid, I was always nurtured by my father to love the environment. That's the main reason why I even went for Project Mr. Gambia. To show Gambians that our environment has a role to play for us, and if we take good care of it, it would give us money. The thing about Gambia is, um, people think that the environment does not matter. I can litter it anyhow. But as an entrepreneur, I see the environment as an avenue for me to make money. Not only making money, but protecting it and saving the universe or the earth at, at large. I work as an agricultural extension agent. I've been working with women in the farms. So I see the things that they go through. So it's very hard. Because when you talk about the country's soil, agricultural wise, Gambia's soil is degraded. So we find it hard to use it for agricultural purposes. So as an entrepreneur, I came up with the idea of Project Mr. Gambia, which is a climate, change, uh, a climate change adaptation mechanism. At the same time, it focuses on skincare and food. So the skincare are all 100% organic and natural. I use these plants from the environment, like the moringa and you name it, the baobab, to create lotions and soaps that are so good for your skin. At the same time, it won't pose any threat on the environment. I'm trying to show girls that you could look good. You could study agriculture. Yes, sometimes it's very hard because you will be messy here and there. But at the same time, you could use it to make yourself look beautiful. I also focus on uh, catering, like I make ever. And most of my ingredients come from these gardens that I walk in. The cassava, the pepper, the everything that I use for my cosmetics and my, uh, for my ever comes from these women. And what I do most is trying to give them the awareness of Project Mr. Gap. Even the mode of agriculture that they do, normally we use chemicals, but I show them botanicals. Botanicals are from the plants that we use. And you could put it in the soil and make it fertile as the same as a chemical would do to the soil. So most of these women say, wow, I never knew that we could use this to make our agricultural products wide. And some girls would be like, I don't believe you use this smelly herb and turn it into a skincare that I could use for my face and it's effective. At the same time, I'm making money. The environment is being protected. So that is Project Mr. Gamier in a nutshell. But my motivation comes from my father because ever since we were young, he was not just us to love ourselves, but not only love yourself, but the environment is important as to you as a human being. So you cannot go without it. A lot of women do, but girls like my age do mock me for my profession because they say maybe, uh, Mariam, you're bright. Why agriculture? Why agricultural science? They think it's just, it's easy to do. You just go put a hole and throw a seed in it. Whereby it's different. What I've learned, there's a lot of science and agri agriculture cannot only be based on the food that we eat. Oh yes, I go to the market and buy tomatoes, that's it. But agriculture can open a whole new avenue for saving the environment only and for cosmetics. And they're all natural and you could save the, the universe at the same time help yourself look beautiful. It's a 50-50 kind of thing. So this is Project Mr. Gambia and this is what I do. Uh, the COVID-19 has affected a lot of people. But for me, in my profession, it didn't affect me much because I'm an extension worker. Be it under the rain, be it under the sun, sometimes it's so rainy and everybody's at home, I have to go and meet my female farmers. If I don't help them, it will become very difficult for them because this is the farm is where they get their ends meet from. So during COVID-19, although it's dangerous, for agricultural extension workers, we've been working throughout, be it in Basse, be it in all over the country. Being a woman in agriculture too, is it's a bit petty because it's a place where a lot of men are. 
but being a female extension worker is very rewarding because you see these old women praying saying that it's COVID-19 but yet you are coming to help us out so the COVID-19 didn't disturb me much as long as I have my protective gear that is my hand sanitizers my mask and we keep social distance between ourselves then it's fine the only problem that I would have is my cosmetics selling them because normally I used to do uh, delivery from door-to-door -door delivery it was a bit hard there and plus being in the cosmetic industry especially organic cosmetics Gambians fail to understand the beauty of organic cosmetics they believe if I don't touch a cream that makes me look lighter it's a problem I'm not you but when it comes to organic cosmetics it gives you the healthy skin and you feel good because I know I'm using a product that won't hurt anybody that won't hurt the environment that I live in and it makes you feel proud of who you are so it was a problem for me because not a lot of women tend to buy the organic cosmetics they rather go buy a product in the market that would destroy their skin and later on throw the the products or the residue of the products on the soil and that would destroy the soil such as plastic everything I use is recyclable you could use the cream at the same time the pot that I put it in is biodegradable and it's recyclable so you could recycle it over and over again at the same time as business so the COVID has been hard on me a lot because most of the packaging material too are expensive I don't get them because of the COVID-19 my advice to other women is no matter what don't give up at the start it's always rough people would laugh at you for the things you do like me when I ventured into agriculture when I take pictures in my bed they would laugh at me and tell me you are worth better than this but it's my passion it's my dream this is what I want to do and the best thing you have to do is try to be focused no matter what you can have everybody can't like your product or not everybody can like you but you have to be assertive as an entrepreneur you have to make sure that you keep an open mind know that this is my product but not everybody would like it try to understand that don't impose your product on other people I know changing is hard but always try to adapt by keeping your principles intact as well you have to keep your principles intact don't give up starting is always hard but keep on going with the momentum and don't feel shy you have people whereby you share the same business with go look for mentors let them help you and study and research on what you have to do but never ever ever give up never give up tomu karambal go sa mo din ke tem tomu karambal e tim buta gunjur de kombu gunjur de wulu tawole to eh be do ko la ja national audit office telum je audito general eh ntolla do ko jang mun tolmu kisi kisi la leti konti bola do tolu wala mun na do ko ti ka konti obu ni e ni e atondi ni e safaro di la yallo na preta safaro di la ikana tolle ke konti bo ka jubi foya ka nyamale tolo lam do ko ti tolu be lo ring banko le ja banko jama ka tandi la ko man safunda e la namol min ta ni e julol min donto e la e la e la tola ani e e sorol min ke perol min soto e rator ka je ko man sapunda ya marakule ya ke e safarol to mi alon ko e la député ol d'accord sa wolé tolu mo ke si sir lal min te ninga ke si ko ke kari poto le saf ka je ko na ke si mo ni ne ni ne keta ni ne manke na di tol tol le baaju be de ngem de ke la wo mu tol le par ni ni la la député le ñom yi ba je la ko wo reportol nim boy kuriya keje abi jele tolle ba to botola nim moy ku kende keje abi jele nim ku kende dol mi alon ko nyanta normal pour que banko sam ba nyato je wo fo nan be bi jele o dibital le bo tol ma koy la no kawol kanyin eh atondi kom nim ko public office mo ma fo ko mi mo be kana no tamano je bari la dibite so for se no le wo kana tamano je wo sambo so le ka ku ka ku nyini kan tol bulu na ko sa loi ko na ko suno ko national assembly se do ko do ko di no national se ka dula ko and ni ne ka di len eh atondi ka do ko di na national wato mo ni national assembly do man do ko na bar wato wato national tan do ko do ko di na na ke ngana report on di ya no o ka kelani 
adu hada mo mol fana ko nga nga boxo so jan so gesso no nimmo ya mere kuriya be ke kan dura do lata be tamo kan tol malo so fero ke do hani me to ke ji ya ken na fengo nin tol ben na planin nan ka ka wokay tol jube wol ko no re na bulandin na plan wol ko no ta wol bla jube no fugo so wol kan tol ma ko e wo bi ka bugo bla do to ni man tara fugo ko ne te ibi ka lo ise ise ke nya wonya majik ten tol gul ka kay tol le no na man so be kay to tol be ka ji wo bla ni tol ka kay tol le no ma ko <laughs> Fish landing sites are associated with small-scale marine and inland fisheries. They provide a location for first point of sale for products and provide a place where fishermen can leave their boats and obtain supplies such as food, fuel and ice. We have different fish landing sites in the Gambia and the most famous would be Tanji, Bakao and Banjo. The list goes on. Our main point of focus today is with Banjo. The Banjo fish landing site has been there for a very long time and is famously known as Tefes by the locals. The fisheries sector in the Gambia is the second most important economic sector after agriculture. Almost every household depends on fish. Accordingly, it has now been turned to a dump site. My name is Mike Amamesa. Oh, this environment is a problem for us. Set set down and set set down. I go to get set set down. My name is Tefes. I'm in the world of Manko. I'm in Manko. I'm in the world of 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 Manko. Amun bantaba, amun penen, filen de top, ayeh gis. Kedai ni buka, lunyu dimbole fi di set. Wah, ni tu tu aje ya, man. Di mana tu nak fikir nak apa? Muna ni, muna hari ni mana nak apa? We cannot solve the problem, because sometimes you talk to them, they will say that you are a foreigner. But that way they say you are foreign. That's it. Sometimes it pain me, because we are all we are the foreigners in this land. We don't know the place we from. We know the place we are going. But you use your money to clean the place and somebody come and dump. That's be in the Tefes. If you go to Tenje, Bakau, all of that place, eh, there's the, that place is clean. The Banju Tefes is not clean at all, I'm telling you, my sister. Somebody can throw uh, rubbish from the market, come and throw it. If you talk, you say you are a foreigner, go away. I before. Bit be was clean. I leg a young egg is near. Bit be a motor control. Young egg is being loud. That I'll take till him till him. Nip Unakala jogge no tooth. So I have Bubuka called F. Cho. Then you know if they talk. Then don't young consul be new dimble and you know you suck up a heavy. At least you'll be no gain a neck a halle. Bit be of a set on. I gisnga. At least you know employ few few brothers by lengthy. When a feeling mel, jadul, te te pesi yep. So te me te pesi bakau, wa bakau ya koyore. So te me te pesi bunjul. Funa ka wa wa fofa koyore. Wa banjuli fun te pesi. Luta njun munun koyore. Dem na wa na njun eka. Gai munun no timbele tiben dum tuai funu defarfi. Lagi ni awak mana def? Mau nyonya ni? 
Nous sommes tous les deux. Nous sommes les deux. Nous sommes tous 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 les deux. Nous while others ignore the toilets to ease themselves. I cannot talk anything about it because the authority will come. If you come, the help you have, you also will support them. Today, Banjo Tefes to be clean. Banjo Tefes is not be clean at all. They have toilets. They make toilets, new toilets in the market. New toilets, nice, nice one. If ties, everything nice. Only one dollars. They should pay. They not pay. Dulu faham ni nara ni kau dah lalui kampar. Barang dah bukan muda, fener dah kampar aku ni mudah pulu pelas pulut. Entah secara noji bisa madu terlaju orang ni yang tak kena doman di doman di. Kau sih nyawa faham nu. So bar kamu yang problem terjadi seniaring. Kau ngah baby je. Nda bos ni lekap kau ngah bed nak. Omo di nak kau ngah di nak. Kamu kuat kau sih nangka aja dah mula kata mikir dah badal. Ikat dah semula lagi kata kamu yang terlun terpian phone lor. Entah macam siapa bos lor. Ndese mosoro na kamoto na nota ngaku ngaseni yani ni mena se dala soje du ni dala soje mare fana mbulu fana ni nda ni kesho le yedu. So wana gi amno yin lige masha la sernan wa lige kadi ni kati wana gi tamu ni wadi gor goro di dem di utien sa di nyau di tek. Kwa lego le danga di esa harisa ten dala se wala five dem ni na amu che. Wa lego le ngat sara no ra dem si bit biam ga wana kwa fuenje kata direct tour na lo tamu du yor. So seven, ni kana lo hamle ni yangu. Unko utole plus, bunifu adam di seven ni warani respecti lo, bunifu adam di seven. Because South Zimbabwe ada salo ni kwa respect, first of all. Wai tami ni liga si wana ni ni goal goal, bunifu wana kwa dafu tele tech. Sutu maani ni efer maabi ni swano na intora, bala bala dunde amu ni seven ni. Bidle ndi adam, wala ni adam lahu si mara ni turu lo amu. Ah ya lo baje la dalas kile ni ni kemo na re kumu kemo di mo la kumu dalas ubondo, dalam falungu sara no lo. Pota falungu sela. Ndi hani ni dalas si muo una raje bo bebulu kwa falungu. Kafu na falu mtamlo, isi si lealo, biri njia wara jamaa nolam, yangu kamo lolo, bara biri ruhina ata aya aya dada ku aya kuna. Ndiye tray na ngi ligi wana ku, wana ku biri ligi nani? Amna wana ku tayari wana zaidi ya kagai ligi arna nani ubi la? Amna yu wana yu ndevar tayari nani nani ubi? Nini diji dam? Na wana ni munta ni aka amwana. Every day damo kwa faradi wana wana aguani aguturo kwa mbali lolo agni dini yodeka. Munta nyaka, fak ni am punya tur balit, ni am wanak balit ini ni udah nyuka dia bub, nyunta iya dan balit diwa, amun bubkar, gay lego le nyuka balit ni tajal em balit, nanti udah nyuka dia bub balit. Wow, so kalau balit bumb set temi tajal aku biar nak pelas, amun kuka bub lolo amun jari, gay nanti jap, am balit di luji gana balit bubkar dap dia nyuka, sunya udah nyunda dia faya kunyi bubal, ni mudah turu kuasa nika, so lolo dia ada. Balik di barin nanti, lego le gay sunya udah bub, balik kat bujuk ada jale bi, dap dia tu saro. There is hope at the end of the day as the fishermen themselves do the cleaning sometimes. Fau fan kaya jaya orang kaman ngakaman enter ni. Pas kau ni nyang nong kaya jilu batai. Nong kena enter ni main ni nong kaya jilu pas batai. Sometimes I went there to report, but if you report them, they say they will come. They not come. If you like, see their runs some. You can see their run. Photo if they see their runs, how their runs are runs is going. It's not good. That's my problem here. Or oh, if your authority can come here and take action, that is good. I'm telling you, to take the face to be clean. Because the place you get your daily bread every day to eat, that place should be clean. But people is not mine. And the market people, that is the problem. The women are cooking in the market. They come and jump the uh, rubbish here. If you talk, they say you are you are foreigner, no talk. That is the problem here. No, no, no problem. We do that. You jam or regular for the arm. So we say you buy some carry. Di nyor tadi pere, nyor wabang jual dengan tadi pere lenyam. Pichi gate, bori gate. 
But the big question is, what else is being drawn about it? <laughs>